Welcome to the Engine Performance Expo Live. I'm Ryan Thompson, the Applications Manager here at Rottler Manufacturing, and we're going to be discussing all aspects about engines, cylinder head porting, surface finish, metrology, balancing, and we're going to peel behind the curtain here and take a look at some of the conversations that industry leaders and experts have every day. Sitting beside me here in our first person is Darren Morgan of VES. Thanks for coming out. Modifying manifolds is something that I really got into in truck and tractor pulling. And there is nothing harder in the world on an engine than truck and tractor pulling. Because these engines go up to 10,800 and stay there until that sled drags them down. So the induction system that you would tune for a truck and tractor pull is different than what you would do with a drag race engine, what you would do with a road race engine, what you would do with a boat. Is that boat a prop boat or is it a jet boat? Two completely different deals. Now, when you have a manifolding camming, I always call it the natural VE curve. You have this many cubic inches with this much valve cam lift, it's that natural VE curve, that engine is going to want to tune up with that cam and those piston speeds and engine speeds that say, it's going to want to make power at 9,000. It's my job to develop the cylinder heads and manifold to do that, to operate that engine in its natural VE curve where it's most efficient. I like the got my dear friend from Digital Metrology, Mark Malberg. Through the 1990s, just about, well, literally any surface on an engine was under my umbrella. You also do a lot with your background and your experience in things, all things measurement, metrology. The cool thing is I can help someone start to explore what really matters. Um, we think it's too rough. Well, maybe it's not too rough, maybe it's too lumpy. The way the rubber conforms of a shoe on a tennis court is the way a gasket conforms on a head deck. Today, the performance all remains in this shape domain. We've used up the easy stuff. And now to do better, and Darren's talk was a great example of how shapes are absolutely critical to getting that last performance out of things. It's no longer a diameter is good enough. It's what's going on in the shape space. The surface finish is the fingerprint of the last thing that touched it. My name is Ed Keebler. Sitting next to me is the absolute ring guru when it comes to piston rings and anything related. This is Keith Jones from Total Seal Manufacturing. We always talk about rings, ring tensions, and one of the things to understand is, is pressure is force over area. So force, how hard is that part pushing against the cylinder wall versus what we'll refer to as drag. That, these are two different things. So we talk about blow-by in the engine. Blow-by you know, is coming from three places. End gap of the ring, ring to the ring groove itself. So you gotta remember you know, that clearance between the ring and the ring land, that is a place for blow-by to get through. It's also a place for oil to get through. And then of course, the also important interface of the ring to the cylinder itself. You've got a thousandths window that that ring falls into a production spec. Well, you're trying to hold four tenths, five tenths clearance ring to ring groove. How are you gonna put in a ring in a groove that's got a thousandths variance in thickness? All of our AP, all of our steel rings, we hold to within a tenth and a half. Our diamond finish rings, we hold to 50 millionths of an inch. This is the lapping process, and you can see the differences in the surfaces shown on the screen right now. Randy Neal. Randy, how are we doing today? Buddy, we are having a ball. God, what talent. You have really brought the best of the best of this deal. Basically, you got to understand, as this thing is going through its normal function, look at all the components that are interacting with each other. Each and every one of them has its own natural frequency. So we can bang on one area in RPM or load and create an event of excitation only to be canceled within the next 10 RPM or 5 RPM, sometimes 1 RPM. So it's in and out, in and out, in and out. Now, the problem is, uh, where I'm trying to go with this is, we don't know what we don't know. 
but only through uh, achievement of technology are we able to now come up with diagnostic equipment that can go in and sample, report, and then we, our mission is to sit there and say, how do we counter this? So if I kind of compared engines, and I'm talking about from an OEM streetcar to a Formula One, that's not apples and oranges, that is planets apart, right? So you, when we have people trying to link that as a common denominator, the only thing I'll say that's common is the word harmonic, right? The, specific, the specifics of each engine has its own, what I call, a personality.